Hello and welcome back to Stew Man Rides. Today we're going to talk about transitioning the bike from full left to full right, how you move your body across the bike during those transitions, and how you can keep the bike stable when you have to get the bike quickly from one side to the other. Hey, welcome back to Stu Man Rides. We're here at Chuckwalla Valley Raceway. We're gonna do another video on some riding techniques. Today, we're gonna to talk about transitioning the bike from full left to full right lean angle and how you can move your body across the bike and uh, keep the bike stable when you have to do those transitions. So here at Chuckwalla Valley Raceway, there's a lot of corners where we're going full left lean to full right lean or vice versa, full right to full left. Sometimes you're going back and forth multiple times over the top of the hill behind me. Uh, we're going from full right lean, full left lean, and then full right lean at the bottom of the hill. So there's a couple times that you're transitioning all the way across the motorcycle. And uh, some people find it difficult to do, make those transitions smooth, uh, make them quickly so that you can aggressively get the bike from one side to the other. There's timing involved there. When it's like, when do you want to move your body from one side to the other? So we're going to talk about that here on the bike stationary first and then I got some video front and back facing cameras and we'll take a look at a lap and a couple of areas of the track where we're making those transitions and we'll talk about the timing of all that stuff and how, that's, how that works, some of the techniques that you can use to kind of smooth out some of these transitions and make the, make the bike turn from left to right a little bit quicker, a little bit smoother using your body. So. We're full left on the bike and we need to transition the bike, turn the bike from full left to full right. How do we go about doing that? How do we move our body from one side to the other while still keeping the bike stable? So that's the, that's the question. Um, so it has to do with the muscles that you use and how you actually move your body across the bike, but it also has to do with the timing of when you move your body across the bike. So let's actually talk about the timing first. So, when you transition from full left to full right, the, the motorcycle is fairly stable when it's on its side. When it flops over and it gets to the top, it's a little bit unstable for a moment and then it kind of comes over the other side and then it sets again in the other direction. So when you're at full lean angle one way and the bike's starting to come up, the bike's pretty stable. It's got some force that's holding it stable. When it gets to the top, it gets a little bit kind of twitchy, I guess you could say, a little bit unstable. And then when it gets to the other side, it kind of stabilizes again in that direction. So the secret when you're going from full left to full right is you actually want to transition your body over the bike before the bike gets to vertical, right? So if you're full left on the bike, let me jump on here. So if we're full left lean on the motorcycle, hanging off way to on the left side, and the bike's starting to come up, what we want to do is we want to actually jump across to the other side of the motorcycle while the motorcycle's coming up and actually get to this side of the bike before the motorcycle hits vertical, right? So the timing of it, when the bike starts to come up, you jump across and then the bike follows you down the other side. So it has two effects. Number one, you're moving across the bike while it's a little bit more stable, right? If you wait, until the bike's perfectly upright and then jump across the other side, you tend to destabilize the bike because the bike is straight up and down and you're jumping across it, moving all that weight, the bike will tend to wiggle when you do that. So if the bike's on its side and it's starting to come up, you jump across very quickly and the bike follows you over, it just makes that whole transition a little bit more stable. So that's one of the things that you wanna think about when you're making these left to right transitions is, is the timing of when you transition your body across. And like I said, you wanna transition before the bike actually becomes vertical. So you start that transition early, your body comes over, and then the rest of, and then the bike follows your body weight over to the other side. It also helps kind of pull the bike over that transition. When you jump over the bike, there's a little bit of momentum there. It helps pull the bike over. Uh, and help that bike actually steer in the other direction. So let's take a look at some on-bike footage from Chuckwalla. We have front and rear facing cameras and the gyro cam on the back of the bike, making it look all MotoGP. We'll look at the transitions coming up over the top of the hill and onto the back straight, so full right to full left to full right. 
and then down the hill at the end of the back straight, full right to full left to full right again, going into the bowl. So these transitions happen pretty quickly in real time. So let's take a look and we'll slow it down so you can get a better idea of how I'm timing my movement across the bike like I talked about earlier. So here's the same transition going up over the hill. We're full right lean. Now watch as the bike starts to come up, move across the bike, it's still leaned over to the right. I'm on the left side of the bike now and the bike follows me over into the left hand corner. We'll see it real time again, going from left to right as we go down the hill here. And you'll see it's a lot harder to pick up on, but I am moving my body just before the bike actually gets to full vertical. So as the bike's still leaned over to the left, I jump across and the bike follows me over to the right. So here going down the hill, full lean to the right, we'll slow it down. Notice that I'll move across just before the bike gets to vertical. Right, so I'm across, the bike follows me over to the other side. And then we'll speed that back up again so you can see the same movement going into the bowl in the opposite direction. So here from full left lean, and then we'll jump across just before the bike gets to full vertical, and then into the bowl we go. So that's a little bit on bike footage so you can kind of get a look at the timing. So, that's the timing of the whole situation. Now, the other thing that you wanna think about when you're moving across the motorcycle is how you're actually doing that, right? So there's a few things to think about. Number one, a lot of people when they move across the motorcycle tend to sit up, move over, and then scrunch back down again or, or get into that hang off position again, right? So it looks something like this, right? You're over here, you're hung off, you sit up, you move over, and then you come back down again, right? So the problem with that is when you bring that weight up here, now you're top heavy, right? So you're gonna influence the motorcycle when you move across it. So if the timing's not right, you're coming up, the bike wiggles and then you go back down, it destabilizes the bike in that transition. So another thing to think about when you're moving across the bike is you wanna actually try to stay low and stay close to the center of the mass on the bike. So rather than being here, coming up and going down, right? What I wanna do is be here and stay low when I come across the bike, right? So I can come across keeping my body weight next to the motorcycle and the motorcycle is gonna remain a lot more stable. If I do it quickly, right, staying low, you can see the bike is pretty stable on the rear stand. If I do it quickly with this, it's pretty easy to rock the bike back and forth on that rear stand because I'm, I have all this weight up high that's flinging the bike side to side, right? So again, once what we want to think about, one technique we want to think about is when we move across the bike, trying to keep your upper body mass close to the gas tank as you would if you were in a corner. So let's take a look at moving across the bike and trying to stay fairly close to the gas tank. Now, my riding style, I'm a little bit more upright than some, so I'm not like way, way hung off and, and very close to the gas tank when I'm in the corner. But you'll notice that I don't really sit up much when I transition across the bike. So here we are, leaned over, and as I come across, you notice that I don't raise up at all. I'm just staying right where I'm at across the bike, keeping my chest about the same distance from the gas tank as I go from left to right. So, a couple things to think about, right? One's the timing, keeping the body mass close to the motorcycle. The next thing I wanted to mention is the actual technique that you use from side to side and moving your body weight across the bike. So, number one, you have to get a little bit of weight off the seat so that you can slide your butt across. You don't want to actually come way out of the seat and plop yourself down on either side of the bike, right? What you want to do is just unweight your butt from the seat a little bit, slide it across the seat, and then let the weight settle back on the bike again. So rather than doing this kind of thing and plopping down on one side, jumping across and being aggressive with the bike, what you want to do is just slide your butt across, right, from side to side, 
keeping in contact with the seat so you're not moving that weight around too much on top of the bike. So last but not least is the muscles and the, and the limbs that you want to use when you're making these transition. And really it's all in the legs, right? If you're using your arms to pull yourself across the motorcycle, it is going to definitely destabilize the bike in those transitions and it will wiggle, right? If you're coming from one side and you're pulling on the bars to move yourself across the bike, any kind of influence that you're putting into the bars at that point is gonna destabilize the motorcycle and it's gonna wiggle when you have those transitions, right? So what we're doing with our legs, if I'm on one side of the motorcycle, I, mean, I am gonna push with this leg that's on the inside to push myself across the bike. But I also want to think about using the inside of my thigh against the gas tank and, these, and this leg to pull myself across the motorcycle as well, right? So we're going to use our legs. We're going to unweight a little bit from the seat. We're going to push with this leg and we're going to pull with this one, slide our butt across nice and smooth, let our knee come out and then drop into the corner on the other side, right? This direction, we're going to push with this leg. We're going to pull with this one slide ourselves across the motorcycle, drop into the other side, all while staying low on the bike. So let's take one more look at slow motion transition from the front view. Watch my left knee against the tank and then it comes away from the tank after I'm leaned over and I'm already transitioned over to the other side of the bike. So I'm using that left knee to pull myself over and then once I get on the other side of the bike, I let that knee drop into the corner. So I guess that's it for this video. Just to summarize very quickly, we talked about the timing, when you wanna move across the motorcycle. You wanna make sure that you're moving across the motorcycle before it gets vertical, right? Getting over to the other side and then let the motorcycle follow you down into the other corner. We talked about uh, how we move across the bike, keeping our body low and nice and close to the gas tank so that we're not throwing this weight way up high and making the bike unstable as we come across that way. And we also talked about the technique that we want to use by making our butt a little bit light in the seat, sliding it across the seat, and also using our legs, one to push and the other to pull your butt across the bike. So one other thing I wanted to mention, um, there is a school of thought that says that you should move your butt over first and then have your upper body follow. I think that's a very valid technique and something to think about. Um, it's something that I personally have a hard time doing and hard time coordinating, but the idea behind it is rather than taking all that weight and going from one side to the other all at once, what we would do is we would move our butt across and then have our upper body follow. So we're moving a little bit of weight and then we move the rest of the weight. So that's something you can try as well. See if that works for you. Maybe it works better for you than it does for me. It's something that I kind of struggle with and have a hard time. I end up moving my whole body at once. Um, but I am still able to do that fairly smoothly, so I guess my technique's okay. So, again, thanks a lot for watching Stu Man Rides. Hopefully you like the content that this channel's been providing. If you do, please subscribe to the channel, share the video with your friends. Let me know if you like it by throwing up a like on YouTube. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment in the questions. I try to respond in the comments section as much as I can. So, uh, yeah, thanks a lot for watching Stu Man Rides. I really appreciate it. And I hope the video helps you ride a little bit better and a little bit faster.